Look at those various different surface types for your pool. This one here is an all tile pool. They also have a standard plaster pool and the variation of that is color plaster. Then there's the fiberglass, vinyl, and then there's the pebble tech with a few variations in that also. But this one here is the all tile pool type. Here's a typical white plaster pool. It's probably still the most common pool plaster type out there. And this is a typical Pebble Tech pool. It comes in various colors also, like with the color plaster. Basically, this is just river rock or pebbles. And here's a good look at a light colored Pebble Tech. You can see it, this is the spa. And it's a little bit rougher than plaster, but it's a lot more durable and longer lasting. Here's your typical fiberglass pool, and if you move into a house, I'm not sure of the surface. I drained down the spa a little bit so you can see the difference. But this fiberglass is really smooth, it's like a surfboard type surface. And this is an in-ground vinyl pool. It's basically just a piece of plastic with some sand underneath it. You may have an above-ground pool made out of the same material. Usually you'll get an Intex pool, they're very popular, and they have a vinyl liner in them. So with the swimming pool, basically you're keeping a body of water clear, which is an unnatural thing to do. That's why circulation is really important. Same with the chemistry and also weekly cleaning of the pool to get all the organics out. It really helps keep the water clear like this. And if not, your pool could look like this. So for good circulation, you want to have a set run time for your size pool, and depending on the season the pool is running. The size of the pool and your equipment are a factor in your circulation of your pool. You want to get at least one cycle of the water going through the filter each day if the pool is running. And so again, the size of the pool determines how long you need to run your equipment to circulate it during certain times of the year. This pool is pretty ginormous, it's about 16 feet deep. It's over 40,000 gallons of water. And I'll show you the equipment at this pool real quick so you get an idea of what I mean by circulation time. So optimally you want to run your pool one cycle through so you want all the water to pass through the filter at least one time per day. This particular pool has two 520 square foot cartridge filters so over a thousand square feet of filter area. It also has a two horsepower pump. So even though it's a really large pool with this kind of filtration it probably just needs about four to six hours in the summertime to circulate it once through but optimally in the summer you want to run it to two cycles to keep the water clean because it's a lot warmer in the summer. And so regardless of your pool surface type, your pool fill water or the, where your water comes from, either well water or municipal water, affects your pool. That's one factor also is just the water itself. And the easy way to tell if you have hard water is in your shower. If you see a lot of calcium buildup in the shower head, you definitely know you have hard water in your area. Probably the best test kit is a Taylor Complete High. This is the K2005. And this tests for um, your chlorine level, your pH, your alkalinity, your calcium hardness, your conditioner. Also gives you a base demand, so if your pH gets low, it tells you how much base to add to raise it up. This is the perfect test kit for do-it-yourself. You can also go with the five-in-one uh, test kit. This tests for your chlorine, tests for your pH, alkalinity, and it also has an acid demand test. You can see how much acid to add. It doesn't have the base test. You don't know how much base to add with this kit, but it gives you the acid demand also, which is also a good kit to have. And then you have your test strips, which looks like this. You dip it in the pool. You can either get the HTH or the Aqua Check, and it gives you a reading by dipping it in. It'll give you your conditioner level, along with your pH, alkalinity, and total hardness, not calcium hardness. There is a difference. You want to test your water once a week or more. You want to test your alkalinity at least once a month, and test your calcium hardness once every three months. Test your conditioner level at the beginning of summer to make sure you're in range, and I recommend 30 to 50 parts per million of conditioner only in your pool.
and I have specific videos on testing your pool water on my channel, adding base and adding acid also. And the type of chemical you use in your pool also affects the chemistry. If you use the trichlor tablets, they'll add conditioner. Dichlor also will add conditioner to your pool level. The Cal Hypo will not add any conditioner. It may make your water cloudy. And the liquid chlorine or chlorine bleach will not add any conditioner to your pool. You can also use Clorox bleach to sanitize your pool. There's a few pool forms that will give you more detailed information on that. But you can definitely keep your pool blue all year long just by using the Clorox bleach. It's about half the strength of your uh, liquid chlorine that you would get at the pool store. This one actually is concentrated, so it's actually more. It's about 8%, so it's a little more than the standard Clorox bleach, which is about 6%. If your pH is too high, you want to lower it with muriatic acid by pouring it around the perimeter of your pool. You want to be careful because the fumes are really toxic. You want to keep your pH between 7.2 and 7.6. That makes the chlorine much more effective. And if you test your pH and it's too low, you want to add some pH up or soda ash to get the pH back up into the desired range. If it stays low for a long time, it could damage the pool equipment and it's very irritating to swim in pool water that has too low of a pH. So the alkalinity level is important. It controls how the pH reacts in your pool. It's called pH bound. So if your alkalinity is too low or too high, it could affect the pH in your pool and also the plaster or the surface of the pool can be affected by that. And your calcium hardness also affects the water's hardness and scale level. As far as changing the water in your pool, you only need to do that if your total dissolved solids gets too high then your water will get kind of weird on you and you may have to drain your pool at that point. But otherwise, in normal conditions, your pool should be fine for several years with the water that it has in there. And total dissolved solids is basically a measurement of everything that's in the water. So part of the maintenance of your pool is vacuuming it every week. If you don't have an automatic cleaner in here, you want to vacuum the pool to keep it clean from any kind of organic debris on the bottom. You also want to brush the pool down every week also to get dirt off the sides. So just get your brush and brush the walls down. And you want to take your leaf rake and skim the top also to get rid of any organic debris on the top. So vacuuming, skimming, and brushing your pool are all part of your weekly maintenance and that'll help keep your pool looking nice and blue and clear. You also want to maintain the proper water level. It should be halfway up the skimmer opening in your pool. There's a skimmer opening there and you want the water level to be halfway in there. And that's the proper water level of your pool. That helps with the flow of water. If it gets too low, the pool may stop running. Also somewhere, also somewhere on your deck you may have an auto fill. If you have a newer pool, it looks something like this. And that keeps the water level in your pool stable without you having to add water manually. I would suggest investing in a good automatic pool cleaner to keep your pool looking good all week long. And this is what's known as a suction side pool cleaner. It works off the suction side of your pool equipment or your pump. And another kind of cleaner is your robot cleaners. Here is the Solar Breeze. It's a surface cleaning, solar powered robot cleaner. You can also get a traditional robot cleaner that plugs in and works on the bottom of the pool. But I like this one because it's very unique. It works on the surface and it's solar power so there's no cords or hoses. It leaves the pool pretty much immaculate. And here's the third type of cleaner for your pool. It's the pressure side cleaner. This one works off a booster pump. They do sell pressure cleaners that work off the return line by itself. So it has a separate booster pump. I'll show you that right now by the equipment. And here's a typical booster pump for a pressure side cleaner. So if you look by your equipment you have one of these. Chances are you have a pressure cleaner. And they'll work off of a separate time clock. So you'll have two timing mechanisms in your back. So those are the three most common cleaners. You have the suction side, the robot cleaners, and the pressure side cleaner. And all the pools operate the same way. When the pump is on, water will be pulled through the skimmer. 
Sometimes they have a cleaner in the pool, some suction will be coming from there also. And then it's returned to the pool to the return jets. And depending on your pool design is how many pool jets you have. And all the pools operate on the same principle. The pump pulls the water into the filter and then it returns it back to the pool. And so there's the pool skimmer operating. You see it pulling the water in and then returns it to the return jets. Depending on your pool, they're placed in different areas. This one has a spa, so some of the water is returning here into the spa. Can be confu can be a little confusing and overwhelming with all these valves and lines. Basically, you can trace your system at the pump here, going into the filter, and you can trace the return coming out. You see the filter is marked outlet. You can trace the plumbing here, going into the heater unit, and then back out the heater, back over here, back through this area, and back into the pool, the return area of the pool, into the return lines, down into the cement, into the pool. So pool equipment can range from the complicated, like this setup here. Or you might just have a simple set of equipment like a pump and a filter and just a regular time clock. It varies from pool to pool. If you don't have an automated system, you'd have a basic time clock like this Intermatic one here. And that controls how many hours the pool runs. You have an on tab and an off tab. And the timer runs and turns on the pool automatically and turns it off. And the pool is operated, pool is operated either by an automatic system like this one here or a regular standard time clock. And here's a typical control panel for your automated system. So every pool will have a pump that will circulate the pool water. Here's a variable speed pump by Pentair. If you have one of these, this controller actually can act as a time clock or you can have it hooked into an automated system. You can also manually control the speeds by pushing a button and starting it. So these are really great systems. You can run on low program at the low and also run on high speed. And if you have a spa attached to your pool, you may have a spa booster pump. This actually will increase the jets in your spa. So you may see your two pumps and motors by your equipment. That means that you have one booster pump for either a spa or maybe a water feature or a waterfall. And there are basically three types of filter. There's a diatomaceous earth filter like this one here, a cartridge filter, and a sand filter. And here's a Clean and Clear Plus cartridge filter by Pentair. your standard sand filter that you're going to find at your house installed. And this is a typical pool heater that you'll find by your equipment if you have a heater. You may also see one of these hooked up to your pool. This is a chlorine feeder for the three, in tab three inch tablets. And you would just open up this lid here and you would feed the three inch tablets in there. You may also have a salt water pool. If you purchase your house, you see something like this. You know that you have a salt system. This is a salt cell from Pentair. And there's also a chance you might have an ozonator in your backyard also. This is the Dell Ozone. Here's a device you can have attached to your pool that controls the pH of your pool itself. Just gotta make sure you add acid to the container. And they also have one that distributes the chlorine into your pool. You do the same thing with the acid one, you pour it in a bucket, and it'll distribute the chlorine into the pool. And there's also various valves. If you have a pool and spa combination or a cleaner side port, you have various valves. And Jandy valves are the most popular of the pool valves. I have a video covering the valves in more detail. And if you have an automated system, you can change the valves from pool to spa mode with the touch of the button. And usually you have a control panel in the house or a pad, or you can also use your iPhone to do the same thing. This is what's called a valve actuator. This is the actual, there's a motor in here and that actually turns the valve for you with the automated system. 
So if you have an attached spa to your pool, once you put it in spa mode, it's basically a self-contained unit. It's like a miniature swimming pool. All the water will be returning and being sucked from the spa through the filter and pumped in here and be heated. And the pool itself will be completely off at that point. You can have various problems with the filter. The DE filter, the elements could leak in there and cause a DE to go back in your pool and dirt. You can also have a problem with the backwash valve on a DE filter. And here's a cartridge filter. Basically what happens is that the cartridges over time will go bad in the filter. They rarely will rip and leak, but they will go bad and it won't filter as efficiently. You'll notice that your pool's not filtering well, and that's when you have to replace the cartridges and the cartridge filter. So as the motor starts to go bad, you may hear a noise like this, you may get louder and louder on you. That's a sign that the motor is going bad, the bearings are wearing out inside. So if your pool has a suction leak, it could be the O-ring, that's the main source of the suction leak usually. A leak at the discharge right here coming out of the pump, a leak at the intake of the pump, a leak at a union before the pump, and also the Jandy valve um, has an O-ring in the face plate that could also be leaking. So if air is getting into your system anywhere in these areas that I pointed out, it'll cause your pump sometimes to lose its prime completely. And also, if you're vacuuming your pool manually, you won't have any suction when you hook up the vacuum. And your automatic cleaner may not work either, because when there's air in the system, the pump can't pull the water the extra 30 feet that it needs to. And another problem you could have, not related to the suction leak, is inside the pump itself. The diffuser, which is this part here that sits in here, that kind of siphons the water, could be warped or melted. And that would cause the pool pump not to prime fully. Behind the diffuser sits the impeller, and this is what the motor shaft actually spins. Sometimes debris gets stuck in here inside the impeller itself or the impeller may be cracked or damaged like this one and not spinning properly. That would also cause the pump not to run efficiently and you may have similar symptoms. If you look at a discharge leak, you can see the water leaking from the top of the pump here. If you go to turn on the pool spotlight and it's not working, definitely check the GFI attached to the light itself. One thing that happens with your pool lights is that the GFI will trip and they won't work. So you just simply reset the GFI here and that should get the pool lights working again if, they don't, if they're not working. Sometimes the bulb itself is burned out, but usually when the spa and pool light are both out, it's the GFI that's the problem. And the main problem you're going to have with your salt system is the cell gets calcium buildup depending on how hard your water is. Some cells will tell you when they're dirty, other cells won't. So every three months you want to take it apart and expect it for calcium buildup. And if your salt cell has a lot of calcium buildup, the salt chlorinating unit will not work and no chlorine will be generated at that point.